If you found this video, you probably know what a lichen is. Or maybe you think you do. You might be thinking, lichens are a type of moss, or lichens are a type of fungus. Before 1869, scientists knew no different either. Lichens were thought to be organisms either within kingdom fungi, a kind of algae, or even within their own group. In reality, lichens are a bit more complicated. Lichen is a wastebasket term for relationships between very different organisms that blur the lines of what we typically think of as an individual. What is a lichen? The traditional definition of a lichen is that it's a stable, symbiotic relationship between a fungus and one or more photosynthetic partners, either algae, cyanobacteria, or both. Let's break that down. A symbiosis is a relationship between different organisms. It's not necessarily good or bad, it's just a relationship. What's a fungus? Fungi are extremely diverse, but they tend to be heterotrophic, propagate using spores, and in their sexual state, form long, string-like hyphae. If or when they reproduce sexually, they often form fruiting bodies such as those shown here. What is algae? You might know this too. Algae can be single cellular or multicellular. Multicellular algae, like the seaweed shown here, always lack vascular tissue like stems, roots, and leaves. Algae is photosynthetic, but it's not a plant. There are red, green, and brown algae, but single-celled green algae is the type of algae we found in lichens. What are cyanobacteria? This you may not know. Cyanobacteria are a type of bacteria that are likely the origin of photosynthesis, so bacteria like them have been around for a while. You may know cyanobacteria as blue-green algae in the context of their pesky presence in freshwater swimming lakes. They're called blue-green algae due to their coloration, but this is a misleading title as they're not actually algae, they're bacteria. Only some lichens have cyanobacteria instead of green algae, and some lichens actually have both symbionts. How does this relationship work? How do these two totally different organisms live together? Let's start by looking at a lichen. This is a lichen from the genus Loberia. Loberia is a group of massive foliose lichens that you can find here on the coast. They're commonly called lung lichens due to their size and appearance, but mostly because they are quite sensitive to air pollution. Populations of Loberia pulmonaria, one species of lung lichen, are declining in some areas due to forestry practices and air pollution. If you were to take a cross section of Loberia or a flat lichen like it, it might look something like this. It looks kind of like a photosynthetic sandwich. There are different types of fungal hyphae on the top and bottom, with algae forming a layer in the middle. Fungal hyphae hug the algae, holding them in place and allowing them to exchange nutrients. Now that you understand what lichens are, I want to talk about what makes them cool. What makes their symbiosis so different from other symbioses? To understand this, we can look at other examples of symbiotic relationships. A well-known example of a symbiotic relationship is between clownfish and certain species of anemones. Cladfish can protect themselves from anemones' stinging tentacles by a process called acclimation, which involves coating their bodies in a stinger-inhibiting mucus. After acclimating, clownfish can't be stung and will live within anemones where it's safe and protected from predators. Anemones actually benefit from this too, as clownfish provide them with ventilation, carbon, and nitrogen. This is a mutualistic symbiosis because both partners benefit. If you were to remove a clownfish from its anemone, it would be without a home, but it would still be a clownfish. Let's look at a different example you might not be familiar with. The Hawaiian bobtail squid and its bacterial partner, Vibrio fishery. The Hawaiian bobtail squid is a hunter, but it hunts at night, so its prey can't see it. Unfortunately for the squid, even at night, it's not totally dark, as the moon and starlight illuminate the water from the sky, making the Hawaiian bobtail squid cast shadows, letting its prey know when it's coming for them, and giving these potential meals more time to swim away. Vibrio fishery, the squid's bacterial symbiont, is bioluminescent, meaning it can make its own light. The bacteria live inside the squid and illuminate it in a way that imitates the moonlight, eliminating its shadow and helping it hunt. The bacteria, in return, get a place to live and are taken care of by the squid. But what would happen if you removed the Vibrio fishery bacteria from the squid? The squid would cast shadows, it wouldn't be as efficient at hunting, but it would still be a squid. Back to lichens. What makes them different from these other symbioses? If you took a clownfish away from its anemone, it might be less safe, but it would still be a clownfish. If you took the Vibrio fishery bacteria out of a squid, it would still be a squid, it would just be worse at hunting. 
Lichens are different. When they're apart, they look nothing like they do when they're together. This makes them really different from anything else. Scientists have tried many times to make their own lichens in labs, putting algae and fungi together, but no one has done this successfully. This, and the fact that lichens take a really long time to grow, means that lichens are kind of hard to study. I would argue that the challenge of growing lichens in labs adds a level of mystery that makes lichens even more interesting. Is there something we're missing? Recent research has shown that it might not just be one fungus and one or two photosynthetic partners in lichens. Many lichens contain yeasts from a completely different group as their main lichen-forming fungus. They were missed for so long because in cross-sections of lichens, these yeasts blend right in with the fungal hyphae. Why is understanding this important? Well, besides being interesting, lichens are ecologically important for a variety of reasons. Lichens are perennial and stable throughout the year. They are also indicative of very specific environmental conditions and can be used for monitoring. In addition to monitoring, lichens are also useful to animals as nest materials and as a food source. For these reasons and others, scientists are still trying to better understand lichens. Fully understanding lichens means understanding the relationships that make them up. Relationships that, when studied, only seem to get more complex and fascinating. So keep paying attention, because there's so much more to learn.